What's up everybody? Welcome to the channel. My name is Eric Castellano. I am the founder of Amazon Lit and in this video, we are going to provide you a ton of tips to scale and grow your Amazon wholesale business. This is a live Q&A, so I'm gonna be answering your questions right here. Make sure you smash that subscribe button and stay lit. So just put your comments or your questions in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, you guys got me for a little while here. I've been doing these pretty frequently. You could check the pre-recorded ones, the ones that happened in the past on our YouTube channel right here. You just explore the other videos and we're gonna get started. So if anybody's just joining here, what we're gonna do, we're gonna switch it up. Instead of telling me where you're from, I wanna know what your average monthly sales revenue is. Right, we're gonna do a little average monthly sales revenue. And this isn't to call anybody out, this is just to really give the other people who are watching this video an indication of how profitable Amazon is, right? Because I know they're gonna start flowing in. Some of you are doing 50,000 a month, other sellers are doing 150,000 a month. Some of you might've just getting started and you're doing three, like this gentleman, he's doing 6,000 a month. Another person, 4,000 a month. This person, 20,000 dollars a month. So that is huge, right? That's a lot of opportunity if you ask me. Um, so it looks like we got some question here. Um, how can I track the profit from a single FBA shipment? You would literally have to do it skew by skew. Uh, we, I don't know why you'd want to do that either. Um, I guess if you want to get real granular, you can track your specific profit for an FBA shipment. It's going to take some pulling of reports on your end. And if you're using a repricer, that will help as well. Because if you only sent specific products that you haven't sold in the past, didn't have inventory of any of those products in stock already, then really that will create an easier method to kind of track those specific products for those new ASINs that you're sending in. But I, I would like to know why you want to track profits for a specific shipment instead of just on a weekly or monthly basis. That's what we do over here. We track profits on a monthly basis and we compare them to the month prior and then we track them on a weekly basis. We can turn them to the week prior and we track them on a quarterly and annual basis as well. Just bought the course. However, the new storage limits are screwing me over with growth. Any advice trying to get around this? Yeah, absolutely, I got some advice. So, this would be great for you, FBA James, to go to the eSellers RI private Facebook group that only members of the course have access to. Um, and you can actually see uh, what we talk about as far as requesting storage increase. All right, so for anybody struggling with storage limits, what you're gonna wanna do is before creating a case to have your storage limits increased, make sure that your past 90 day ordered units is greater than your storage limit, right? So you wanna analyze your past 90 days of sales and make sure that that number is greater than your storage limit. Because what Amazon's doing, this is just a presumption based on our experience in the industry. What Amazon's doing is they're saying, hey, we're gonna analyze your past 90 days of sales and we're gonna give you a storage limit that's indicative of that number, right? So let's say in the past 90 days you sold 10,000 units. Your storage limit is probably going to be around that 10,000 unit mark. So before you even consider creating a case to, to increase your storage limits, you wanna make sure that you're selling more inventory than what you've sold in the past 90 days and it's greater than your inventory storage limit. And then there's a few things they want you to request, right? Um, the type of increase, is it standard, is it, is it oversized, is it for apparel, is it for hazmat? Also your de desired inventory limit, right? Is, and it has to be in cubic feet, they wanna see it in cubic feet, as well as a detailed business justification for this increase. When I say detailed, I do not mean, hey, I have some SKUs I'm trying to send in. I would like an increase in storage. Detailed, like what is your game plan, right? What are your plans to grow your business with Amazon? 
You gotta outline that for them in bullet points preferably, right? Because they're analyzing this stuff and a lot of times they're using these softwares that are just scraping for data. So they might not even look at it. Um, we've had some of our members in eSellers RI recently submit inventory storage limit increases and they get responses like you have an individual selling plan when really they have a professional seller account. So it's this happens all the time. Amazon just uses softwares to scrape these cases and then some of them make it through and some of them get auto responses. So that should be helpful. And also FBA James, there's a ton of info in our private Facebook group for course members like yourself to gain more insight about that information. 30K, we'll compare with 30K. So if you're just joining here, put your, your average monthly sales on Amazon in the comments. Right now we got about 60 to 70K between six or seven of you. Uh, we got Amazon, somebody with 60K. We got Chris Miller with 75K, amazing. So we got a question from Kevin. Any recommendations? I got suspended for forged documents, but I bought it from a reputable wholesaler and have bank statements, invoice, everything. I just highlighted it. Yeah, so they shouldn't give you forged documents if you just highlighted the information. Most likely something on that invoice looks off, right? Forged documents, it's not a minor offense, right, with Amazon. They take that stuff really seriously. So listen, we've dealt with a lot of suspensions, not only our own, but also hundreds of other clients who've reached out to us to get their account reinstated. And I'm yet to ever see anybody, usually the truth comes out, right? And I, I don't know you, Kevin. I don't know you if um, we're just discussing this here, right? But usually if it's a forged document complaint and a suspension because of a forged document, usually it's because the seller forged a document, right? So I would encourage you to get honest with yourself is that something you did and really analyze your business structure and your business model and start trying to operate a legitimate, honest and integrity fueled business. Now that might not be the case, right? So you would have to create a POA and explain that to Amazon that there was no editing of this document. But most likely if you did edit it, that's a no-no for, for selling on Amazon. Amazon does not want to see that. They're kicking sellers off left and right for people who are not operating legitimate businesses. Let's see what else we got here. We got 150K from Kevin, who's the same gentleman who just asked about the suspension. We got 30K from Allegiant, great. All right, and Davy Jones says, I have found all products eventually tank and very rarely recover. Do you have any advice? Uh, I would like to ask you this, Davy Jones. You're, I'm assuming you're doing retail arbitrage because if you're doing wholesale, usually prices won't tank drastically when you're doing wholesale because most of the people are getting them from the same or similar prices, give or take a quarter or nickel, a dime here. But for the most part, we're using some of the same distributors or similar distributors. And we, we shop around to multiple distributors and wholesalers and we compare catalogs. And most of the time, you know, you'll find the same products within a quarter or a nickel or a dime within each other of the price point. So usually price tanking happens with retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, especially if you're using lists. Right, if you're purchasing lead lists from one of these uh, Instagram accounts or Facebook accounts or Discord groups, that's a, that leads a high probability for price tanking because they say, hey, we gave this list to 10 people, right? But really they gave it to 30 people. And then out of those 30 people, five of them gave it to two other people. So now you got 50 people buying the same product. It looks amazing when you research it. A couple days later, there's 30 sellers in stock and now they're all competing for the buy box and the price is just driving down. Uh, but there's indicators to look out for when a price is about to tank on a listing. And a good indicator is, a, is an increase in rank. So the green rank line will be going up like this and a decrease in price over the course of a few weeks. So if that chart looks like that where the rank's going up and the price is going down, that's a good indication that that price is on its way to tanking. And I would probably stay away from it or go way less aggressive on my purchase order. Good pricing strategy. So this gentleman or woman, ask what is a good pricing strategy? So a good pricing strategy is match the buy box, right? Match the buy box is a good pricing strategy. And for anybody who's not using a repricer, you should be using a repricer. A repricer will change the game for you. You should definitely be using a repricer. Uh, we got some other sales coming in. My homeboy, good friend of mine, the Money Badger's doing 30K a month. 
We also got buy low, sell highs, doing 70K a month just between those two gentlemen right there. You're talking about $1.2 million in sales revenue a month, even at a, let's say a 15% net profit, even 12% not per net profit, you're talking about $150,000 um, a year in net profits that those two gentlemen combined are producing. All right, we got this other seller here. I just started like three months ago and I'm at 5K a month still grinding. See, that's what I love. There's not many business models where you can literally start it three months ago and three months in, you're doing five, seven, ten thousand dollars a month in sales. Like that's amazing. That's impressive, if you ask me. We got a hundred k from Mo. That's amazing. Uh, we are personally not hurt by the restock limit. I think our unit restock is like one point two million units, um, or oh, it's a little less. It's about a million units is our max inventory, which makes sense because right now in stock we have a little over three hundred thousand units. So that makes perfect sense. That goes back to the math I was talking about a few minutes ago where they're analyzing your 90 day sales and then making your storage limit based off that number because we have about 330,000 units in stock. Our inventory storage limits right about a million, 330 units times, you know, uh, times three, which would be three months is about a million. So it makes perfect logical sense to what that storage limit is. Um, what steps should I take to switch over to wholesale on Amazon? So I'm assuming you're doing RA, OA, or even private label to wholesale if you're trying to grow revenue would be first you need to contact a bunch of distributors and wholesalers, right? The foundation of the wholesale business is in the relationships that you build with your vendors. So it's crucial to really reach out, get uncomfortable, build these relationships and get pricing catalogs and start sourcing through those pricing catalogs so you could start finding profitable products. Also, the second thing I'll touch on is there's going to be a lot of fear involved with the transition because it's a new business model, right? You're going to be dishing out higher cost of goods because you're going to have to be placing orders that are, you know, $1,500. $5,000, $8,000. So that's a lot more money than you're probably going to go spend at Ross or, or Marshall's, you know, or TJ Maxx. You might be spending 800, a thousand bucks there, but now you're going to be dishing out more money. So there's a lot of fear there. So there's fear when you're doing anything new. So I encourage you to work through that fear and trust in the process. And also, if you have the funds to invest, I highly encourage joining a program like ours because we guide you through step by step and show you exactly how to grow a wholesale business. And a lot of people ask like, well, how do I know your training will work? Well, I, you'll know it works because we literally, it's the same thing that we do to build our $5 million a month Amazon business, step by step. It's every single piece of information that we use and still currently use on a daily basis to continue to grow our business every single day. So it'll work for you as well. And then also to answer your question with one last part of something you should be looking into as you begin to grow these relationships, begin to place orders is looking for a warehouse to move into or really negotiating prices with the pep, with the prep centers that you're using, because there's a lot of money to be saved by a using a warehouse to produce your own inventory or b negotiating the prices that you're paying for this, this inventory to be processed and packaged at these FBA prep centers. Oh, we're actually doing amazing presentation about about this in Miami on August 7th. It's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, we're doing an amazing presentation about the transition from OA to uh, wholesale, RA to wholesale. Um, and also while we're talking about dates, so some dates to look out for. If you're in the Miami area, it'll be August 7th. And if you are selling wholesale on Amazon or you're interested in selling uh, wholesale on Amazon, I think everybody should attend this. It's ASD out in Vegas. On August 23rd, we're going to be hosting a hell of an event. It's going to be well over 100 Amazon sellers there networking, hanging out, talking. It's going to be pretty amazing. So I encourage all of you, if you can make it to Vegas for ASD, it's from the 22nd to the 25th of August, which I believe is Sunday to Wednesday. The event is on a Monday, August 23rd. I highly encourage you to attend that event. Good, reasonable net profit to shoot for. Really, you're, what you're shooting for when you're buying products would be gross profit. 
Um, and then with an understanding of your expenses, you'll be able to analyze net profits. So what I suggest shooting for when you're purchasing wholesale products, right, between 10 and 25%, you know, that's pretty par for the course. Once in a while, you find a great wholesale product, you're making 50, 60, 80% on it. They, they happen and they're amazing and we, we like to get those. But a majority of your business, a good 70 75% of it will be, you know, products that you're profiting 15, 18, 20, 25% on. Um, and then all you got to do is know your your expenses to run your business, right? And let's say your average profit is 20% and your, your average item is selling for 20 bucks. So now you're talking your average profit. Gross profit is $4 per item. Now you got to say, okay, I'm making $4 in gross profit per item, but what's my expense to get that out the door, right? After I pay my employees, after I pay my rent, the electricity bill, my software, shipping, boxes, all that. Let's say it costs you $1.90 per item to get that product out the door after you allocate your funds to all those expenses. So really your net profit per item will be $2.10. Now, most people don't analyze this number. I encourage you to analyze this. We will be doing a seller conference in New Jersey early fall, but I highly encourage anybody, the event to attend is the ASD event. That's going to be crazy. Just and, I, and this is what you need to do, right? If you plan on attending the ASD event, put it on your business credit card, right? It's less money than Uncle Sam's going to take for you at the end of the year. And also 100% of food is now fully tax write off. So, you know, you go out to a nice dinner, you talk about business, you put the flights on the credit card. I personally, I don't like to use the points that I have on my credit cards for business travel. I like to use my points for personal travel. So we put all of our expenses on our business credit card and then we use the points that we gain for personal travel, right? So if I'm going on a, on a trip with my girl or wherever, or family, I like to use the points for that because if I'm spending money, I want Uncle Sam to take as least as possible. So if we can kind of decrease our taxable income by traveling the country and going to seminars, networking events, trade shows, then that's something we like to do. And I encourage a lot of you to do that as well, because not only are you decreasing your taxable income, right? But you're also getting points by putting on your credit card to take free personal travel trips, which we are able to clear your mind and get a better vision of where your business wants to go. But also you're networking and building your business. It's, it's truly amazing. For wholesale, do you get shipped to you and apply FNSQ or straight to Amazon and they apply if needed? So we have done the ship to Amazon thing in the past. But right now, 100% of our inventory is shipped to us for a few reasons. One, Amazon takes a long time to apply your FN SKU because what happens is it arrives at their FBA prep center and then they put it in the corner and it waits in line and it could take, you know, seven days, 14 days for them to actually prep it and put that FN SKU on there. Also, another reason why we prefer to do it ourselves is quality control, right? When you're using a prep center, or even Amazon, they may deem some things unfit to sell when really, like let's say it's a plastic bottle and there's a little dent in it and all you have to do is squeeze it to undent it, you know, but Amazon might just deem that unsellable, right? So they don't even list it for sale. The prep center might list something that's too damaged and sell it for sale and then you get customer complaints. So we personally like to handle all of our inventory to help manage the customer transaction because at the end of the day, the most important person in every transaction in the e-commerce business is the customer who's receiving the end product. Why do you use in-house buyers versus a team of VAs? Uh, we prefer in-house buyers because they're just so much easier to train Right there, it's a little more motivating when you just have the whole team there in person. Our buyers crush it. Yeah, you got to pay them a little more or a lot more. You ain't going to be paying no in house buyer three, four dollars an hour. But also, I'm a firm believer that you get what you pay for. Right. And we've used VAs in the past and we've just never had an amazing experience. I've never met a VA who was buying for us. who I was like, wow, I'm super impressed with this person's buying capabilities. That's just never happened for us. Hopefully that happens for you. But for us, it's just never happened. Just registered for ASD. Can't wait to shake your hand. Absolutely. So, yeah, this has been a lot of fun. Like I said, anybody, if you're going to ASD, keep an eye out on our social media because we'll be posting how to register for the event that we're hosting out there. 
It's going to be wild. I promise you, you want to be there. If you're an Amazon seller or considering selling on Amazon, you want to be at this event. So just turn on notifications on Instagram or our social media. So as soon as it goes live, you're able to register before it sells out. But I promise you, it's going to sell out really quick. And I'm interested in meeting a lot of you there as well. Is there a good starting budget for wholesale for a newbie? Yeah. Recommended starting budget, two to $4,000. This will really allow you to get situated, place one or two wholesale orders with the vendors that you're doing business with and test some of those products to get started. Well, everybody, it's a rickety wrap. It's been a pleasure. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, make sure you smash that subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video, Sunday Sessions, episode 13, stay lit.